Hello and welcome back everybody to another VBA tutorial. In this video we are going to be covering how to do web scraping using the VBA object model. So we're going to be using two different references in this particular tutorial and it will be a multi-part series just because there's kind of a lot of stuff that we're going to have to do in order to what we would call uh, get up and running. So we're going to be using the Internet Explorer uh, object library and then the HTML object library. Both of these do exist inside of the VBA object model. And so the first thing I got to tell people is while I don't necessarily encourage you to web scrape with VBA, I understand that some people that's just kind of what they're restricted to. That's obviously what they're most com comfortable with. The only big drawback that you have when you're using VBA is you are restricted to the Internet Explorer um, object. And that's kind of a big drawback because a lot of the web pages are not optimized or they're not really kind of set up to run anymore on the Internet Explorer uh, object. And so you sometimes might see differences if you were in, say, Google Chrome versus you know, Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer, or even um, Microsoft Edge. And so you just got to be careful about that. I will discuss that technically there is kind of a workaround that if we wanted to, we could technically leverage Python to get at least the HTML code, and then we could parse it using um, the Microsoft HTML object library. So that is an option for us if we want to. Um, but that's again for a later discussion. So as you can tell, I have a workbook open. So the first thing that we're going to do is you go to your developer tab, then visual basics. And then from here, uh, if you haven't already, you want to make sure that you insert a new module. So you just want to right click insert module. And then from here, you want to basically uh, enable certain reference libraries. Uh, like I said, the Internet Explorer one and the HTML object one. So you go up to tools references and right now I, I technically have them already enabled because I was doing the tutorial so I had to enable it in order to do it but if you look right down here you're going to see Microsoft Internet Controls uh, this is what we're going to be using to interact with the Internet Explorer application and then there's the Microsoft HTML object library and so this is great when it comes to interacting with HTML code uh, being able to find certain tags being able to parse that HTML code and even add some interactivity with that particular HTML code. So it's very useful, um, very helpful when it comes to kind of automating certain tasks. And again, multi-part series at this point, we're just gonna be able to, to uh, get the Internet Explorer application and then get the HTML code. And so as you can tell, uh, they're both Microsoft. So you just go down to M for Microsoft. And then here would be more than likely the Internet Explorer one. And if you go a little bit up, uh, you would see the uh, HTML object library right around here. So they should be right next to each other. You just want to check those boxes and you're good to go. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to just create a new subroutine. We'll call it VBA uh, web scraping. Put your little brackets just like that. And then from here, let's just get an instance of Internet Explorer open. And then we're going to navigate to a URL. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare a new uh, object variable. We're going to call it IE object. And this will be an Internet Explorer object. That's just the Internet Explorer application itself. Now, obviously, I don't have it open, so we need to create a new instance of the Internet Explorer application. And we're going to set that IE object equal to a new Internet Explorer. And just like that, we should be good. Uh, just because we have it doesn't mean it's visible, so we want to make sure it's visible. So make sure the application is visible. And so we're going to set the IE object, we're going to set that visible property equal to true. And this is what we should get. Okay, so then you have your new Internet Explorer application open. As you can tell, nothing's really here because we haven't actually navigated to anywhere. Um, so I'm going to close this out and let's navigate to a URL. So we're going to navigate <coughs> to a URL. And so we're going to, again, call our IE object. And then there is a method called navigate, which takes a couple different parameters. The first one is a URL. And in this one, I have HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And let's go to YouTube. 
right? This is a YouTube video, we'll go to YouTube. Uh, and then from here, that should be good to go and this will navigate to that URL. Making sure I spelt it right, looks like we are good to go. As you can tell, it's loading. And then of course this nice little pop-up happens and they, you know, all these wonderful videos and stuff like that. And so what we're gonna do is before we actually proceed to the next part of our code. So basically what I like to make sure happens is once you actually navigate to that URL, you wanna make sure the page is actually loaded before you start calling different properties and methods that are related to that page. Otherwise you're gonna get all sorts of errors. So we're gonna write a little section of our code so that way it's gonna keep checking to make sure that the page is actually loaded before it moves on to the next section. And so we're gonna use a do while loop. And what we're gonna say is, hey, we're gonna take our object, our IE object, and there's a property called busy. If that property equals true, that means that page is more than likely still loading. So if that's true, or we're gonna take that IE object, and then we're gonna call the ready state property and we're gonna check this. If it doesn't equal ready state complete, that means it's still loading. So if either one of these conditions are met, I wanna wait one second and then ask the question again. I wanna wait one second and then see, is it still loading? And so what we'll do is we'll just pause our Excel application. We'll call wait now plus, and then there's something called time value and we can put it in a string. And I basically want to wait for, ooh, my bad, one second. And then we're just gonna keep looping. So all this little section of code is doing is it's gonna keep basically checking to see if that page is still loading. If it's still loading, it's gonna pause a second and then it's gonna check again. And then once it's finished loading, then it's gonna go down to the next portion of the code. And at this next portion, what we wanna do is we're just gonna print out the location URL, something really simple to make sure that, hey, it's done. So print the URL that we are currently at. And so we're gonna do debug print. We're gonna do IE object, where is it? Location URL. And so it's gonna print it right down here in the immediate window. As you can tell, it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. Sometimes this happens as well, which is it just navigates to another page altogether. Um, still gonna have to look into that one. But you can tell down below, it did print the URL. And so that's, that's basically what we wanted, is we just want it to where it loads the page and then it simply just grabs the URL. But it, the important part is that page is finished loading before it actually goes um, to the next section. So really all this is doing is wait till the page is finished loading before moving to the next section of code. Bam, just like that. Okay, and then the final thing that we're gonna do in this particular video is we're gonna grab the HTML code and we're gonna store it in an object variable. And then in our next video, we're gonna parse that HTML code. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get the HTML code. Well, it's the HTML document for the page. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first declare a new variable, we'll call it IE document. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be an HTML document. This is coming from our HTML object library reference. And then from here, we're gonna set that IE document equal to the IE object and there's a property called document that returns basically the HTML code, you know, basically all the document information about that particular page. It then stores it in this particular object variable. And so from here, um, this, this will actually store um, that particular document object inside uh, in this inside this little object. And so that concludes uh, this particular video. In the next video, we're gonna parse that HTML document. So if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video and if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel uh, and share it if you must. Uh, so we'll see you guys in the next video. Stick around.